live. We are live. This is Kevin Mullen. And I'm Mark Simon. Welcome to the game. So we are with you once again as we work together through the COVID-19 pandemic and share in the restrictions that we all face. We will continue to dig into the issues, concerns, and challenges that face us as a community via social media and here on Peninsula TV. And we are pleased to welcome Congresswoman Anna Eshoo speaking to us from her congressional district. Hi, Anna, thank you for being with us. Hi, Mark, and hi, Kevin. Yeah, I'm speaking from my kitchen, actually. <laughs> okay, looks well, very comfy, very cozy. Um, Speaker Pelosi today announced that she would like one trillion in, to, in funds to state and local governments. I, I know that your office is incredibly busy through the leadership of your district staff under Karen Chapman, very busy managing constituent concerns, responding to concerns of local government. Um, tell us about this new proposal and what you how you think things are going for us here on the peninsula. Well, first to uh, comment on the peninsula, I, I'm so proud of constituents and our region. I'm really honored to obey the state order, uh, wearing the face mask when they go out and gloves. Uh, those are the real tools in our toolkit right now. And I hope that uh, the spread of the uh, virus would have been much greater in the loss of life were it not for what people have done. But they've not only mm -hmm. done that, come together to do so many other things. Sam Sita is doing a fabulous job in assisting small businesses. Uh, people are helping with food at the food banks. I could go on and on, uh, but it is, uh, it, it is really a source of inspiration to me uh, to see and to know what people are doing. Now on uh, state and local governments, uh, they are hemorrhaging money. They are hemorrhaging money. Now the federal government can print money. Uh, states can't do that. Uh, we are the United States of America. And so the funding that needs to go to states, to counties, uh, to cities is an absolute must. Uh, and you know, when you use the term states, counties, cities, um, it, um, it sounds rather cold, uh, but when you examine uh, what cities do. We're talking about first responders. We're talking about firefighters. We're talking about police officers. We're talking about social services and the workers in county government and in the nonprofit sector that are providing these services. So this is the heartthrob of our communities. Uh, and uh, we need to step up. Uh, I think it's going to be easy because uh, uh, everyone's heard what uh, uh, Senator McConnell said, uh, essentially let the, sta the states go bankrupt. Uh, and as uh, Governor Cuomo said, it's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> so we have, we have a heavy lift. Uh, I hope that it will be bipartisan and that uh, my Republican colleagues will really come to their senses uh, because uh, they, they have to explain this uh, to their mayors, to their city councilmen, uh, to their governors. Tell us about your bill that proposes expanding federal funding of broadband for healthcare facilities. Why do you think that's necessary? And uh, it's, a, it's got a, a co-author, so I suppose we're optimistic. Yeah, well, it's a, and he's a uh, Republican from Alaska, right. Don Young. Uh, it's a, it's a good bill. It's a good solid bill. Uh, right now, there are discounts for uh, telehealth uh, in rural areas, and that's very important. But this legislation would spread it across the country. Let me just give you an example. At Stanford, they moved from 2% using telehealth, telemedicine, uh, to close to 20%. So this would uh, raise the amount of the discounts and uh, hospitals, community health centers across all of medicine and healthcare uh, would have access to this. And the costs to, uh, to hospitals are considerable. Uh, so I think that this is something that uh, we not only should, uh, should do now, uh, but to keep it in place beyond the pandemic. 
uh, one of the future, uh, the future features of uh, practicing medicine. I've had so many constituents tell me the convenience it was to be able to uh, talk to their doctors uh, in video conference, uh, access their records. Uh, so we know that it works, uh, but we want it to be everywhere in the country uh, with a good discount, uh, which will yeah. then uh, motivate uh, hospital centers to use it. Mm. Kevin. So Congresswoman, I want to get your thoughts on how you think Silicon Valley is going to fare through this uh, pandemic. People are talking about a replica of the Great Recession that we saw in 2007, 2008. Some are even saying this could be uh, unemployment along the lines of the Great Depression. Uh, a pretty epic kinds of uh, rhetoric being uh, tossed around here. Do you fear that the income inequality that we see not only on the peninsula, but across the country at a, at a uh, shrinking middle class, that those trends are actually going to be exacerbated here by this, this economic dislocation. How do we come out of this potentially? And I guess some of that simply depends on how deep and pervasive this recession is and the duration, I guess, of the, of the recession. Uh, well, it's, a, uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, we have different sectors to our economy. Uh, I would say in the hospitality industry, uh, that those workers are very, very hard hit. Uh, anyone that's a minimum wage worker, they're being wiped out right now. Of course, we're doing everything we can to add to the uh, state's unemployment base, uh, direct cash transfers to people. Uh, but for the, in the high tech industry, uh, for the large companies, they've made a commitment to their workers on. Anyone, uh, you know, the gig workers can work from home. Uh, financial services uh, people can work for home. It's the workers that can't stay home to do their work that have to go outside of the home, I think are the ones that right now uh, are, um, are really uh, under enormous financial stress. Uh, many of them rent, uh, and so they're worried about evictions. Uh, if they're covered by their city uh, so that evictions don't take place. They're worried how they're going to come up with a balloon payment when, God willing, uh, this pande uh, pandemic ebbs. So I, I would say it depends on what slice of the economy um, you examine. It's, it's not all one and the same. Yeah, well, and that's a good point, but I, I guess the question is, I mean, you can have an expectation that runs the gamut from Silicon Valley will bounce back quickly because it has been known to do that to we could see a devastating loss, not only of jobs, but of companies. What, what's your sense of where we're going to end up somewhere in the middle? Or is this going to be I mean, there are some noted economists who are predicting pretty extreme things, as Kevin referenced. I think the smaller the company, the higher the risk of their survival. Uh, and that's why we fashioned uh, the small business um, uh, loans the way we did. Uh, there wasn't enough money in the first in eight and a half days. It was all committed. Now we've replenished that. Uh, but it's a bumpy ride as the administration executes getting the money out. Of the door. So uh, I worry about the, uh, the uh, about, about the small businesses that. Uh, haven't reopened yet. That's why we need to have uh, a plan that is national, that it's executed uh, locally, uh, that there are resources relative to reopening. It needs to be science-based. It needs to be fair. It needs to be something that people understand and they can cooperate uh, with. So we have, there are a lot of layers to this. The very large companies have staying power in terms of resources, uh, and they've made big commitments, not only to our community, but first of all, uh, the first question I asked them when I spoke to them was, tell me what you're doing with your employees. Are there any furloughs? Are there any layoffs? Are people being fully paid? Uh, and, uh, and they are. Uh, the other issue is, how long does, how long does this last? And why it's so important 
uh, to put the pedal to the metal, uh, to test, uh, to do contact tracing. That's all part of the national bill that myself and a handful of other members uh, put together for a national uh, plan so that it's strategic, so that it includes all of it. And um, I think it's a, it's a smart way to go. It has the, you know, we all seen the president's briefings. Uh, we know how many different things he said. Uh, how much has he contributed to this in terms of making it better or making it worse? Well, I'm going to be kind and describe it in one word, incompetence. Uh, something and that's very kindness, serious, huh? Yeah, uh, something uh, that we know now, and that is that our intelligence services um, gave the president the warnings early on in the president's, uh, they call it the uh, president's uh, daily briefing. Uh, and uh, uh, so he didn't pay attention to it. There was denial, denial, denial. Remember when it was called a hoax? I really took exception to that one. Uh, uh, so there was denial. Uh, then extraordinary delays, uh, and then the execution uh, of getting out the supplies uh, that were needed. I, it is just, it really wanna makes one weep that this is the United States of America and we don't manufacture face masks, uh, masks or personal protective equipment uh, that hospitals and doctors were scouring different parts of China and Pakistan and other countries trying to get their supplies, uh, nasal swabs. Uh, th th this is uh, th this is not the kind of response that gives people confidence. Uh, and and to see our frontline workers, our nurses, our doctors, our assistants. Uh, it, it really want to makes one weep. Now there's some catch up that's taking place now, uh, but um, uh, this is not. Uh, I listened to a uh, to an Irish poet last night who said that in Ireland, Ireland so loves the United States of America, and today they pity us. Mm. Kevin. So Congresswoman, we have a, a polarized political culture in America, uh, the red states, the blue states, uh, divisions that predated this pandemic and, and deep recession that is looming here. Um, do we come out of this even more divided as a people, as a country, or could the magnitude of this challenge be so much that in some ways it actually forces uh, Americans, even though we're physically distanced from one another, to actually become closer in, f in really fighting through uh, this common conflict that we're all dealing with. What, what is your hope? Now, those are two completely different views. And uh, I think it's the second, uh, uh, Kevin. And I, I don't think I'm being uh, uh, overly optimistic about that. Uh, we see people coming together and really what the American spirit is, doing the most simple but beautiful things, the generosity of people, the reaching out to, get, uh, uh, to one another, neighborhoods coming together where neighbors never even knew each other before. Uh, and it is, it's, it's an almost magical thing that people are they notice it, they see it, they, they are experiencing it themselves. And I think that they're sick and tired of the divisions. They want to come back to a sense of normalcy that is very American. Uh, I, I always have believed in the decency and the goodness of the American people. And I, I think that that's what is going to, I think that's what's taking place now. And I think as we get closer to November, that there will be a unity of that spirit that will uh, take people to their absentee ballots and say, we want to change. We know what's good. We know what's right. We want to protect our democracy. 
and we want some peace and calm in our lives. They're tired of the chaos and the tearing away at our democracy by um, someone that really should be uniting us. So, which leads me to the elections. Uh, I, I truly believe that um, Vice President Biden will become president of the United States for all of those reasons and more. Are you happy that he's the nominee? Of course I am. Yes, very. You've, mm -hmm. you've known him a long time. What's your sense of him over the years? Well, he's always struck me as um, one of the most decent human beings I've ever met. I mean, Joe is uh, a good, good man. Um, and he has endured many losses in his life. Imagine uh, his wife and, and, and baby child were killed in an automobile accident. His two sons, thank God, survived, but they were seriously injured. He buried a son. Um, and so he, he very much relates to what happens in people's lives because it's happened to him. He's always identified uh, with the lunch bucket uh, workers in our country, always. Uh, and so uh, I think that Joe understands the heart and soul of our country. Uh, and then the other layer, uh, obviously, is the vast and deep and broad experience he's had on domestic issues, on foreign policy, uh, and then serving as uh, Barack Obama's vice president. Uh, and uh, so I think the combination of, uh, of all of that, uh, the life experiences, uh, as well as the public uh, experience, um, we've paid a price for someone that doesn't understand anything and doesn't know how to make things work. Uh, and um, that's why we, <laughs> we need Joe and uh, 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 God bless him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, that he chose to run. I'm grateful to all of the Democrats that chose to run. And uh, uh, now we see something that most people comment and say they never thought they were going to see, and that is that the Democratic Party is united yeah. and early on. Kevin, we got time for one more question. What have you got? Well, just bringing it back home to San Mateo County and Santa Clara County for you, Congresswoman, the kinds of calls that you're getting from your constituents. I would imagine with the, uh, this unique situation we have, your staff is uh, scrambling to answer uh, constituent questions. Uh, I know in my office that is the case, but what is on people's minds? What are the, the uh, primary concerns uh, that your constituents are facing right now in terms of the questions and inquiries and, and dealing with the federal bureaucracy? Well, there, um, in different areas, Kevin, uh, number one, uh, in all of my telephone town hall meetings, I have a, uh, a medical professional uh, on the line so that they can, uh, uh, those very specific questions can be answered uh, by a professional. Uh, they really want to know about uh, testing uh, and the different types of tests uh, and what they detect and what they don't. Uh, uh, the complications of uh, in the uh, access of federal dollars that we've appropriated and how to access those dollars, that's a whole, whole area of um, uh, people trying to figure it out. We're trying to simplify it for them. Uh, and uh, so I, I would say that on, on the very practical side of what comes next as uh, we look to reopen and what we need to do in this community, people have sacrificed a great deal uh, to uh, make sure that they follow the stay at home order. Uh, so it's a legitimate question. What comes next? How do I access that? What kind of a test is it? Uh, who's going to administer it? Uh, do I have to pay for it? Uh, how is it going to be done? Is there enough for uh, all Californians and people in our country? Uh, I, I have uh, really very highly educated uh, constituents. They ask very, very good questions. 
Congresswoman Anna Eschi, thank you so much for being with us, especially under these trying circumstances. Thank you, gentlemen. It's and, a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. You're and I'm Mark Simon. And I'm Kevin Mullen. And thank you for being with us here online on the game. And join us next time. We'll be back soon. See you later.